The Empire has no shortage of artillery units. Great cannons, mortars, and hellblasters have thundered their way across the tabletop and into the hearts of wargamers for decades. The Imperial Gunnery School in Nulm is always thinking bigger. But sometimes, the answer to your artillery needs are three halflings, a slingshot, and really spicy soup. I'm Nathan Stone, welcome to Lost Units of Warhammer. This is the history of the Halfling Hot Pot. Halflings were a product of the Old Hammer era, an obvious transplant from the hobbits of Tolkien, but altogether less pleasant. The Halflings of Warhammer are greedy gluttons who rarely waste time thinking about anything not related to eating or procuring their next meal. Their chief non-culinary hobby seems to be larceny, and travelers through the moot often leave with far fewer possessions than they entered. It seems that when Games Workshop created Halflings, they just said, What if hobbits... But ass. Halfling allies were available to a few armies in 3rd edition, the Empire being one of them. There wasn't much to the contingent. You could grab a commander, a standard bearer, militia, and scouts, a very basic support force for your main army. But the accompanying lore told us of the Halflings of the Moot, and set the stage for their introduction into the Empire proper a few short years later. Uh, 1993. A very good year, which featured the wonders of Jurassic Park, the criminally underrated Batman Mask of the Phantasm, and the last time I truly felt good about the Toronto Maple Leafs. This King Amongst Years also gifted us with the 4th edition Empire Army book, a bright and colourful tome full of weird, wild, and often painfully mediocre units. If this book had one thing going for it, it was style. If it had one thing going against it, that would be terrible internal balance. But if it had one thing that no other Empire book afterwards would, that would be halflings. We aren't exactly spoiled for choice where our halflings are concerned. A single regiment of basic halflings that could be outfitted for ranged or close combat, and the halfling hot pot. The hot pot had an entire page dedicated to its rules, which, for a war machine of the era, was on the lighter side. Invented by Chef Gambo Hartsock, out of sheer desperation during a goblin raid, the war machine itself is little more than a giant slingshot, which throws boiling cauldrons of questionably prepared soups and stews at the enemy. It's powered by three halflings, one of whom is the head chef, though that doesn't matter in game terms. The hot pot functions like a stone thrower, using the larger of the two circular templates, meaning that a lucky shot could cover a decent number of enemy warriors in boiling soup. Unfortunately, stone throwers were tragically inaccurate during this era, requiring players to guess distances, then roll an unforgiving scatter and artillery dice to see where the shot actually landed. They were unreliable at best, and an utter waste of points at worst, but many players, myself amongst them, still took stone throwers for that intoxicating potential of flattening any enemy unit. It didn't happen much, but when it did, ah, oh, there was nothing better. The main difference between a stone thrower and the hot pot lay in the profile, the hot pot having far less strength, range, and damage than traditional stone throwers. The advantages of the hot pot were that it was very small, and thus easier to keep safe, and that it was only 50 points. This, however, was offset by the requirement that you take a regiment of normal halflings if you desired the hot pot. The unfortunate reality for Empire players looking to add a little halfling spice to their force in 4th and 5th was that the Hot Pot was an underpowered stone thrower in an era where stone throwers weren't a strong choice. Unless you were designing an army to a theme, or just loved some halflings, you were probably better off spending your war machine points elsewhere. The last appearance of the Hot Pot within the Empire list was in the Get You By Ravening Hordes supplement at the beginning of 6th edition. This list was the Last Supper for all of the non-human regiments of the Empire army, including halflings, dwarfs, and ogres. Afterwards, the Empire would be a nation of only humans on the battlefield. The Ravening Horde's incarnation of the Hot Pot is… far from impressive. Doubling in points to 100, though losing the halfling regiment requirement. It is again a much weaker version of a stone thrower, with lesser range. The most galling thing about this version of the hot pot is that it is somehow 
30 points more expensive than an actual stone thrower. That is some top-notch rules writing. The 6th edition Empire Army book had no place for a silly soup slingshot, and so our halfling chefs found themselves facing unemployment and an uncertain future. If this was the end of the road for a goofy hero hammer holdover, would anyone have been surprised? Luckily for our plump and plucky food fighters, there was an army that could use their services. An army of misfits and outcasts. The Dogs of War. The 6th edition Dogs of War army list was provided to us by Alessio Cavator in White Dwarf magazine. The list was a two-part work, the first of which gave us a generic set of sellsword regiments and characters, and the second featuring the famous Regiments of Renown, unique units and characters that had been the focal point of the army in 5th edition. This list gives us arguably the best version of the Hot Pot. It's back to 50 points, and though it still hits at strength 3, the model under the center of the template takes a strength 6 hit that causes d3 wounds. Is it great? No, I wouldn't say so. But it's cheap and fun to play with, which makes this probably the best army to take a Hot Pot in. This is where we leave the Hot Pot, and honestly, it's not the worst fate for a lost unit. The Dogs of War list was played by enthusiasts into 7th edition, and by a few absolute mad lads in 8th. Before we end this video, I would be remiss to not mention the revolting moot scenario from White Dwarf 314. This scenario saw Marius Leetdorf, the Mad Count of Averland, invade the moot after halflings kept stealing the building materials for a bridge he was trying to build through it. It was a pretty great scenario. Amongst the halfling defenders, was an ingenious machine, and perhaps the final form of the hot pot. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the half tank. This thing is an absolute beast. Its soup cannon throws out a flame template worth of strength 5 hits with no armor save, and it hits like a chariot on the charge. It's strong, it's tough, and a bargain at 150 points. Of course, it's not official by any stretch of the imagination, but would anyone seriously refuse to play against such a wonderfully silly contraption? The halflings of the moot were one of the more comical aspects of the Warhammer world, and as the setting grew darker over the additions, we saw them less and less on the table. That the hot pot lasted as long as it did is honestly a little surprising. A cartoonish war machine that outlived the era that spawned it and injected a little silliness into a darkening setting. Thanks for watching Lost Units of Warhammer. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe for more. If you like what I say and the way I say it, then check out the War Games Orchard podcast for more Warhammer Fantasy talk. Finally, thanks to our patrons who help make these videos possible.